Hi everyone, Andy Ballone, Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Welcome to this series on secure external collaboration in Microsoft 365. It's a four-part series sponsored by Syskit. In part two, we're going to be discussing guest access and exactly what it is and how it works. Now, of course, this is brought to you by Syskit and they can help you solve your everyday technical problems with their awesome management and governance platform, Syskit Point. And you can find out more about that by clicking the link below in the description. So without any further ado, I think it's about time we got to grips with guest access. Let's take a look. Okay, so looking at guest accounts in Microsoft 365. So I'm going to come down here into our admin center and I'm going to come up to users and active users. Now, just a couple of things. If you create a user here, then essentially you're adding them within your own tenant, AKA within your own company, and you would then need to assign them a license. Um, the other thing that you can also do is you might want to bring them in as a guest user. Now, a guest user might be a customer or a supplier or a, a contractor or something like that. Now, to be honest, it, it, there's two ways to do it. You can have guest access in Teams. So you can see there's a little link here. And if you are, let's say, a team owner, then you have the rights to add a guest in. Alternatively, um, if I click here, what this is going to do is to be honest, uh, this just takes you to a shortcut in Azure Active Directory. So you can see it just flips over. So rather than that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm actually going to go into Azure Active Directory. And let's just take a quick look at managing it here. And I like doing it here because it doesn't, you know, flip between the various uh, screens. So I'm going to pop into Azure Active Directory here. I'm going to come into Users. And in the Users here, you can see that we've got a new user menu. And I am going to go in here. And you've got two choices again. So you can either create a new user or you can invite an external user. Please note that this was previously known as guest users, but they're now called external users. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, invite uh, a guest user. Now, I've got a user here and his name is uh, Nestor Wilk. OK, and I'll just pop his email, ad email address in and I'm going to put his name in. So Nestor and Wilk. And I'm going to send him a little message. So you might want to send him a message that says, you know, please come and join the party. OK, so there we go. I've now created uh, a little message for him. I could add him to a group. You can also add a guest account as an admin role as well. So, for example, this might be a contractor outside your business and you want to make them, let's say, for example, a SharePoint admin or an Exchange admin. And you can block the sign in if you're not quite ready for them. The other thing that you might want to choose is a usage location. Uh, now, for the purpose of this demo, my tenant is actually in the US. So I'm going to go ahead. Oops, I'm just going to pop this in to the US. Oops. I'm going to say United States. OK, uh, and the reason for that is if you're in a team, for example, any data that that user creates will be stored in that location. Of course, you can also go in and you can fill up these these details here as well if you want to. All right. Now, so I've gone ahead and done that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invite this uh, user uh, access to our directory. OK. Now, so you can see, I'm just going to refresh this page and let's just have a quick look at what happens. Now, I'm actually working on two tenants here. So in this tenant, this is my guest tenant. You can see this is Nestor and um, you can see that Nestor is um, the, what does that say? That says the 80694 tenant. And, but you can see that this tenant 
is a different tenant. So the number on this tenant is a, a little bit different. So if I go in and just refresh this page, uh, I'm going to scroll down. And as I scroll down, you can see that we, in fact, we do have actually two Nestor Wilks. So this is the Nestor Wilk that's internal to our organization, but this is the Nestor from our partner company. And you can see that this, this guy has been invited as a guest. And let's just have a quick look at this account. So you can see that you have your email address and, but look at this, you can also see that it's EXT. It's an external user. It's an external guest here. Now, what can you do with that? Well, some of the first thing, so that invite has gone out. So I can just, if I pop over to Nestor here, you can now see that Nestor has received an invite. Now, just before I go ahead and access this, one of the things I want to do is just mention um, what else can you do before, before I show you the invite. The, the question is, who can send out these invitations, all right? Now, if I go back into at, uh, Azure Active Directory, I'm gonna scroll down here. We have something called external identities. And in external identities, very important setting, we have something called external collaboration settings. So in here, you can see guest user access. And this is really what level of permissions do you want your guest users to enjoy? So for example, here, this option, guest users will have the same access as members. So if you had internal members in a team or a Microsoft 365 group, um, again, they will have that full inclusion. Uh, the second option, guest users will have limited access to specific properties and memberships. And then guest access is restricted to properties and memberships in their own directory objects only. And that's the most restrictive. All right. Now, for the purpose of this demo, that's fine. I'm happy with that. And this is super important, folks. So the question is, who can invite guests? So anyone in the organization can invite guests, including guests. Oh my, maybe not, okay? Um, that is kind of just completely wide open. Uh, member users and users assigned to specific admin roles can invite guests. And I'll talk about that role in a moment. Now that's quite a useful one, all right? So members, uh, member users or, or users specific admin roles. Now. Um, if you don't want members, let's say, for example, you just wanted owners to do this, then you can choose only users assigned to specific admin roles. And then finally, no one in the organization can invite guests. And this is the most restrictive. So, for example, it's internal only. Now, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to choose uh, this option here. Now, if you're using tools like, let's say, uh, Microsoft Power Automate or Microsoft Power Apps, you can possibly create like an automation. So, for example, when somebody fills in an online form, they automatically will get access to as a guest. Do you want to do any collaboration restrictions? So if you leave it blank, if you don't put anything in here, it means it's just uh, open to all. It's everybody can connect. But if you decide to, let's say, um, allow invitation or deny invitations to speci specific domains, um, then essentially what you're creating is a block list. So you're blocking. So you're basically saying, um, oh, you open to everyone except these domains and then allow invitations only to specific domains. So this you're making a, a very explicit allow list uh, with this option. OK, so those are the, the different options. And of course, you would then put those target domains in here. So this is a really important 
uh, feature there okay so that's the external collaboration settings now um, what else is important for guest access well um, we've gone ahead we've created our guests um, the next thing is uh, what do we want our guests to have access to so uh, for example I, I could go into applications here and I've got an application here called LinkedIn and LinkedIn, of course, everybody knows LinkedIn. I could say, hey, you know, I would like a guest to have access to this. So I can come in here and I can now add in uh, a user. Um, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to add a user here and I'm going to type in Nestor. And as we can see, of course, I've got two options here. And this is the, this is the external uh, Nestor. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bring him in. All right, and let's just click on assign, and there we go. And maybe one other. Let's just have a quick look, see what other applications we've got. I've got Zoom here, so if we wanted the user to have access to Zoom, again, I could just click in, add the user. So bring in this user here. I could just paste that in, just bring them in. So there's Nestra and just add him. Now, some applications require a specific role. Again, for this demo, I'm just selecting a basic option here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to assign that uh, group. Now, I mentioned um, who can create administrators. So, very useful. I'm just gonna come in here into Azure AD, and if I click into roles and admins, Okay, there is a group here called, if I just scroll down, and don't be overwhelmed by all of these different roles, by the way, we have a special role here called the guest inviter role. Now, by default, if you are an owner of a group uh, and you're allowing it as an admin, then uh, owners will also have the rights to invite guests. But this is that special role. So, for example, you might have managers within the organization uh, who are going to do that, for example. All right. Now, that's uh, that. So um, now what we're going to do is let's go back in and let's have a look at what the experience is like from Nestor's side. So, OK, so Nestor has received an invite. And I'm going to say, yeah, hey, you know what, Nestor? I'm going to go ahead and access this. So he's accepting the invite. And this is now opening up uh, Microsoft Teams uh, for the user. Not Microsoft Teams, rather. But he's getting access to the Adatum site. Nestor's site was called Contoso, as you just saw. Look at that. He's now got access to his apps. So not only is he a guest, but he also has access to any applications that you might want to make available for the user. So that's one way of inviting guests in. It can be an admin function. Now, if you decide to allow your users to create Microsoft 365 groups and Microsoft Teams, and you want those users to be able to invite guests, what's that experience like? Let's take a look. So here I am, and I'm, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just going to flip over and I'm gonna come in to Microsoft Teams. So inviting a user um, can be done in a number of different ways. Now, let's just have a quick look. So in here, I've got a, a number of teams here. I've got a team called Oslo Sales. And what I want to do is I want to add in a member to this. So of course, this user is an external user. So I'm going to add in, and you can see that Andy is here and is going to come in as a guest. All right, so this will just take a moment. Okay, so you can see that Andy has now been added in as a guest. Now, if I just click on close here, of course, what's happened is that user has now been added in. So you can see that Andy has now come in and he's a guest account. All right. Uh, now, if I pop back into Azure Active Directory, in fact, I don't even need to go there. If I come into users and come into guest users, you'll now see that Andy indeed 
is a guest user. And of course, you can see his email address. Now, that's the interesting thing. If you, you'll notice his email address is normal here, but if I just pop back into Azure Active Directory, you get more of a, a realistic uh, view of that. So if I go back in here and then I go into Users, and in the Users, of course, Andy is going to be at the top here. So here's Andy. Um, and you can see that if I click onto Andy's account, you can see there we go. So uh, that's the tenant dot on microsoft.com so that's his that's his external email address and ext so what this is doing is it's creating an external account within my tenant just as before the only difference here is that of course you have gone in and added uh, andy in as a guest so what's that experience like for the user well let's just pop over and you can see that andy's received an email so all i now need to do is go in and say yeah that's fine i'll just click on that and i'll go ahead and say yeah i want to open in microsoft teams and i will now have access at the appropriate uh, level all right now this time of course you get an oauth token and this is open authentication and this is basically just requesting saying what permissions does the app require you to have and it's just signing you in and it's just reading your basic details so i'm going to accept that on behalf of my organization and you can now see that when teams opens i will now have access to uh, any documents any work and now you should see that Andy has now got access. All right. Now, um, it's saying, do you want to switch to a datum? Um, and we might ask you to sign in. So I'm going to say, yes, that's absolutely fine because it's logging me under a different account. All right. Because I'm now a guest in that separate organization. So there you have it. I now have access uh, to the, the Oslo sales team as a guest account. So there you have it, guest access, now part of Microsoft 365, and of course, Azure Active Directory. Isn't that cool? I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, now, do remember to check out Syskit and how they can help you solve your troubleshooting issues with their awesome management and governance platform for 365, Syskit Point. And you can check the links uh, below. And of course, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. Now, now, in part three, uh, we're going to take a look at B2B Direct Connect, the all new sharing feature, which comes part of Azure Active Directory, and it absolutely rocks. So don't miss out on that. So from me, Andy Malone, you stay safe and I'll see you soon. Take care.